weeks before your presentation, you need to be online and have a presence. Now you have a presence, right? Mm -hmm. Billy, you have a presence. So the first thing is several weeks before. The second thing is is your marketing program. And uh, so we're all realtors here. So let's just talk about a minute. Um, I put 66 point marketing and you'll have a hard time finding 66 points in marketing that you're willing to do. But I'm going to tell you what the three point marketing system is. Okay. Put it on MLS. Put a sign in the yard and pray. Okay. That's the three point marketing system. So what really is going to distinguish you from any other listing agent? And that's what's going to happen. You're going to go in there. You might be up against three, four, five different listing agents. What is going to give you, what is going to set you apart from every other listing agent? And if you look at like um, Remax, what's Remax's full name? Remax Marketing. Remax Marketing. Star One Realty Marketing. They're not selling real estate. They are selling marketing. Um, what business is Coca-Cola in? Marketing. They're in the business of cola. They sell Coke. Okay? But they spend $4 billion a year on finding people who drink cola. What does U-Haul do? U-Haul's in the business of renting trucks and finding people that want to rent trucks. So we get a real estate license and we think, oh, I know everything about real estate. I can do comps, I can do contracts, I can take a, con a contact from here to there, but I don't have anyone to talk to. So how do you distinguish yourself in a listing appointment? There's two things that are just so critical. Um, One of them is education, because you're going to go in there and you're going to cover two big areas of conversation. You're going to cover marketing and education. And we're going to talk about what you do in this area. But let's have some fun. I haven't done one of these in 20 years. So how do you sell a house? Okay, and the last sign, pray. All right, let's take out pray. Let's see how many ways. You can use your phone. Find out every single way to sell a house. FISBO. FISBO. You know, it's not going to help you with uh, getting a... After uh, they fail uh, at info, you know, info 2. Info 2. By the biggest yeah. thing. Okay, because 10% of the time, you're going to sell a house to some neighbor who's going to say, Oh my God, I've been waiting for that house. I've got my friend up north. I want them to move down here. Social media. Mind. So, okay, social media. So that's, we're going to call that uh, free, okay, free social media. So what can you put it on free? Let's say LinkedIn, okay, it's free. Instagram. Instagram. Facebook. TikTok. Facebook. Twitter. Twitter. And said TikTok. TikTok. For now. Craigslist. <laughs> I don't Craigslist. Yeah, no, I don't do all that. Craigslist is is that still valid? Yeah, it really is. is. It? I can, yeah. I, look on Craigslist. All my houses are on Craigslist right now. A lot yeah. of people put it. I used to be on my list of everyone look on your phone. If I were to ask you, how do you sell a house? You are a realtor. You're a professional marketing person. There's I got a sixty six point marketing campaign right here that's going to be part of your presentation. And as a realtor, you need to be able to say, um, let me sell your home. I am a marketing expert. I'm going to teach you how to sell your home. By the way, let me send you my marketing, 66-point uh, marketing. And what I would do is I would do it as a YouTube, okay, like six to seven minutes, okay, where you're going to go over your 66-point marketing program. Hey, Joe, I'm meeting with you tomorrow to list your house. I wanted to give you the six or seven minutes on my marketing program so that when we get together tomorrow, you'll know what I'm going to do to help you sell your home. 
So what you're going to do is say, I put it on MLS, I put a sign in the yard, I put in an info tube, I put it on social media, including LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Craigslist. What else are you going to do? Come on, throw me out some ideas. Realtor.com. Realtor.com is a free... Okay. Uh, professional uh, photography. Okay. Now that's cost. That's okay, not this free. is free. Free, okay. Okay, now we're going to do where you can spend money. Send flyers to the neighborhood. Okay, flyers to the neighborhood. Every door direct. EDD for the hood. Everyone understand what that means? Okay, what else? On free, you could do open house. Open house. Yeah. Uh, virtual tour. Virtual tour. Cheating, yeah. No, I want you to cheat. <laughs> look I, on the, I on actually, the I, 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 did, I am cheating a little bit. Oh, I, no. I did. I, look on. Look, what's going to happen is when you're yeah. talking to somebody. Oh, I'm a realtor. Let me list your house. Exactly. I do these 27 yeah. things right up. Boom, 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 boom. How are you going to remember them? So I don't have to remember if you, them. If, <laughs> look, if you have to walk into somebody's house on a listing presentation and say, "Here's my 66 point I mean, marketing plan," you know what they're going to do? They're going to look at it. Yeah. And they're going to be looking like this. And that's when you lose that connectivity. You need to not have them looking at stuff when you're in the presentation. And I'm going to tell you how you do that. I was just saying, I'm talking to this guy over Clearwater. Um, it was a lead I got from somebody somewhere. And um, I was trying to set up an appointment with him because I've already talked to six realtors. And I go, well, well all right, give me a shot. I'll come over and talk to you. Again. No, I don't want to meet with anybody else. So he takes my calls and my emails. But he won't let me go see him. All right, let's talk about sales. What are the chances that you're going to get this listing? Uh, very low. Four out of ten on cold leads. You're going to make ten presentations, and six of them you're not going to get. It's because of all kinds of reasons. It doesn't matter why you didn't get it. Really, ultimately, it matters how many can you get. Now, if it's a referral or a strong a uh, realtor who's been prospecting somebody, they've gotten a hundred things from you, and by the time they're ready to sell their house, they call you and say, hey, I'm ready. You're gonna get eight out of 10 of those, okay? So 40% of the, I don't wanna call them cold leads, because they're hot enough for you to um, get an appointment with them. I have to buzz people into this one neighborhood, so I might have to open the gate. So four out of 10 on cold leads, and eight out of 10 on hot leads. Okay, so you're gonna go into these presentations and you're not gonna get them. And that's okay, because we're in a sales job. And in sales, the, the look at baseball. Baseball, they fail seven out of 10 times, they get a $20 million contract. And they fail seven, to, to bat 300. You're a hero. They fail seven out of 10 times. And that's what sales is all about. Lately. <laughs> yeah, well, they're a little bit different. All right, so we're talking about Selling. What are we going to sell? We're going to sell two things. Okay. We're going to sell marketing and we're going to sell education. Okay. Under marketing, we have failed. If this is us, we don't have it yet. Under paid advertising, what else do we have? We have Everdoor Direct. Uh, email. You can email. Email's free. Okay, under free, we could do broker open house. We could do uh, under under um, cost, we could do paid advertising on what? Facebook. Facebook. We could do Google pay per click. Pay per click. We could do direct marketing. Do you know what direct marketing is or target marketing? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's say that the house is a uh, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage with a pool in Regency Park or Embassy Hills. You can statistically say that the buyer of that house is going to be between 35 and 45 years old. They've got a credit score of 680 and higher. They've got two kids that are uh, under the age of uh, 15. Um, they make eighty to ninety thousand dollars a year, and they rent. You can go to a list broker and get a thousand people in that characteristic, and you can send them all a letter. 
This is proactively going out there and trying to find the buyer. Uh, a lot of people are shopping, but there's people that could be buyers that you can find and target market them and go after them and make them a buyer where they say, you know, I really, I've been renting, I've got two kids, I really want a house with a pool. So statistically speaking, you can, and if you become a target marketing expert, you will crush other realtors. So you've got your marketing program. And I can send you the 66-point marketing plan. A lot of it isn't really marketing. A lot of it has to do with um, the, function of, the function of what the realtor does. From um, uh, how do you get more money for a house? Okay, we talked about education. We haven't gotten into it yet. Education is... Uh, uh, is number five in our presentation. Under education, we're gonna cover how do you get more for your house? There's five ways. Upgrade. Five ways to get more for your house, okay? Under uh, education, we're gonna talk about the contract. There are three big deals in the contract, okay? There are three dates, which are actually different than the three big deals. This is under education. We're going to talk about MLS data entry. Don't get me started on the MLS data entry. If you have a realtor and you're up against them, pull up their listings. And if it says buyer to verify, do you know buyer to verify? It's malpractice. Um, Plantation Palms in Land Lakes. do you know that neighborhood? It's unbelievably nice. It's extraordinarily nice. Golf course community. Do you know Plantation Palms has no pet restrictions? Do you know there's 65 listings on there, 66 now, where it says buyer to verify. But because there's no pet restrictions, if you have a 100-pound dog, you're never going to look in that neighborhood because there's no chance that that realtor, that your buyer's agent, is going to go on there and call them and say, are there pet restrictions? What's gonna happen is they're gonna put in their 100 pound dog and they're gonna see that there's only 150 listings and 100 pound dog means no pet restrictions, okay? Um, if you're coming into town and you have a 100 pound dog or two 100 pound big, what are, name a big dog, what happens if it's 150 pounds? That's 100 plus. No it says 100 plus, okay. No pet plus restrictions. Plus. So what's the important part of that? You've got a population of buyers. Right now we're running around 1,500 transactions a month in Pasco County. Those people come to town, they have a need. They need this, 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 and this. If you have buyer to verify on your listing, that means that every buyer's agent is going to have to call the homeowners association and say, Hi, what are the pet restrictions? There's no way that's happening. Look, I'm a listing agent right now on a property in Buena Vista, and I've called four days in a row to verify the pet restrictions so I can list this house, and they will not return my call. I have emailed them and I've called them. So what are the chances that some buyer's agent that has a $500,000 buyer coming into town, what are the chances they're gonna call plant, by the way, when I listed that Plantation Palms house, it took me about five days there to, find, to finally get a call back, to find out that there were no pet restrictions. It was mind-boggling to think this unbelievable neighborhood, extraordinarily attractive houses and neighborhood, clubhouse is amazing, no pet restrictions. And hundreds of people a year come to town that want to buy a $500,000 house and nobody's buying in Plantation Palms if they have a big dog and yet it's the perfect neighborhood. So to make yourself stand out in your listing presentation, for me, I'm, you know, I, I get upset when I see buyer to verify or buyer's agent to verify. So in the education process, this MLS data form and talking about uh, getting all of the information so that buyers, look, you know what's worse than, than buyer to... Um, there is some validity to some of those things, but sometimes it will change. As far Same as thing with the school, school zones will change too. Yeah. There is a risk yeah. that you're going to be wrong, and that's why people say, well, I didn't want to put anything on there because I was afraid I would be sued. Right. What, I, what I do, if I have a question on the HOA and I can't get it myself, 
I'll call the agent. And a lot of times they'll either go get it or they know the information. To pay the ass. And they'll say, well, I do it. You know, how many times do they put, they never put the, the, uh, the disclosures and all that in the paper clip. No. And before I see a house, I go, can I? Can you send me a disclosure? Yeah. I'm not going to show a house without a disclosure. I just that's just what I think. I don't know if I'm right. Or wrong, like or you mentioned, con get, getting in contact with some of these HOA agents is a challenge. Getting contact with some of these agents. listing agents yeah. is a challenge. <laughs> but that's not what where we are here. Yeah. This is, no, the focus of this one is going to be how do you distinguish yourself from other listing agents to have it where the person you're presenting this idea to says, you're my guy, you're my girl, I want you to handle this. The answer is we're gonna sell marketing and we're gonna sell education. So I'm jumping around on purpose because I wanna fill this board, but I haven't given you the, the points here. The third thing, the second thing is um, your, your marketing program. If you send it to them by YouTube, hi, this is Randy, I'm meeting with you tomorrow, Neil, to list your house. I just wanted to give you six or seven minutes on my marketing so that when I come in, you know my marketing program. If you have to spend 20 or 30 minutes talking about your marketing in the listing presentation, you're gonna go two hours because education is gonna take you 20 or 25 minutes. And to respect your time and the, uh, the seller's time, You've got to try to condense this down. And there's lots of stories where people say, well, I spent three hours with them and I was on the floor playing with their kids and their dogs. And you know what happens when you do that? And, and mostly it's done because the, the, you're, you're, you're trying to get the a The agent's trying to like it, be likable and trustable. And, the, the, and what happens like is, to do is this. they create this idea. You call them again yeah. and say, oh my God, there's Randy. Oh, yeah, this is going to take me an hour to get him off the phone. They're going to start ghosting you because you weren't succinct and respectful with their time. Mostly it's agents who aren't prepared to make a listing presentation and don't know how to structure a listing presentation. And they're afraid to talk about price and commission. commission. Okay, price and commission okay we're going to show you how to handle price and commission okay but first let's go into uh, number three you see that's blank to when you go on a listing appointment this is a sales call you need to have three things going through for you you need to be sharp you need to have just had a haircut, you need to have your clean shoes, you need to have on your dress pants, don't wear a suit. People who wear a tie, wear a tie because they're coming to get your money. Don't wear a tie to a listing appointment. You go in there, you want to be dressed smart, you want to look smart, you want to feel smart, you want to be sharp, you want to trim your beard, shave, go in there and be sharp. The second thing you need to be is enthusiastic. Neil, I'm thrilled that you allowed me to come in here to uh, make this listing presentation. I'm really happy I was able to make time to meet with you because I believe that I'm the guy to sell your house. When you, you, I sent you my video last night. You got my 66-point marketing uh, program, so we don't have to talk about what I'm going to do to sell your house. But we are going to spend some time together on... Um, you know, on talking about the selling process and how we're going to accomplish getting you the most amount of money for your home in the least amount of time. By the way, has this have you sold a house before? Okay, if they've never sold a house before, then I'm going to give them a lot more education on the contract. I'm going to give them a lot more information on the importance of the MLS data entry form being filled out. The process itself. I'm going to give them, that's yeah. the, pro, and the contract. There's three things in the contract, just reminding ourselves. There's the inspection, and truly, the, the, the negotiation doesn't start until the inspection is over. Because, you, hey, we got a contract. But as soon as they do the inspection, the first thing they're going to do is try to tear it apart and renegotiate the price. The next thing is going to be the appraisal, and then finally the um, um, buyer has to prove their financing on day 30. Okay, if they if the financing contingency lets them out of the contract, 
without having to lose their deposit. So loan, it goes to day 31. Loan, got, loan appro approval period. Final loan approval, exactly. And then the three dates, you all know, three days for the inspection, I mean, three days for the deposit, 15 days for the inspection, the 30 days on the financing contingency. Really key that you prepare your customer to understand this process and how at each time there'll be forks in the road and that you are going to give them the options that they will consider in making a decision and you'll help them and counsel them on this. But the, we don't want to go into that, we want to stay on target which is a listing presentation. But number three, which I've left blank here, this is a listing presentation. So what do you have? You have their address. So let's say the address is 123 Main Street. You're going to spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour the night before going over that neighborhood. You're going to look at all of the actives. You're going to look at all of the pendings. You're going to look at all of the solds. You're going to do the price per square foot of the actives, the pendings, and the sold. You're going to look at the houses that you're up against, the actives, and that's in education. We didn't talk about that. In education, people think that they're selling their house based on sales. That's for the appraisal. This house is worth $200 a square foot. That means that we can sell it for 300 grand if it's 1,500 square feet. But the reality of it is, is that you're not competing with the solds. You're competing with the actives. So if there are 10 houses that are priced between 290 and 300,000, and you price yours at 300,000, you're the, how many houses have to sell before your house is the one that people want next? Hmm. So you need to educate them on how do you sell a house? You say, yeah, it's worth 300 grand, but there's 20 houses between 275 and 300 grand that have a pool. How are we going to compete with those? Do you have the nicest kitchen? Do you have granite countertops? Do you have a new roof? Do you have new windows? So when you're looking at those 10 houses, when you're doing your homework on this property, you're going to print out the ones that make sense. These four houses are our true competition. These four solds are our true value of the property. You need to be going there and say, there's 23 houses for sale in Regency Park right now. 12 of them are two bedroom, two baths, and two bedroom, one baths. They don't count. That leaves eight houses that are our true competition. This is not, no notes, okay? This is you telling them, this house is worth $300,000. We're not gonna do that till price and commission, but you're gonna spend an enormous amount of time on the homework the night before or the morning of on that address, the subject property. You have got to become an expert on the subject property. Um, right now I have a listing in, uh, in Gulf Island Beach and Tennis Resort. I mean, I've done so much homework on this. You can ask me any question. Okay, there's 11 active listings. There's one pending, oh, by the way. Are those three buildings, three buildings the same Island? HOA or are they no. separate? Separate HOA. Oh. Building one doesn't have this. Building two and three have the clubhouse and the gym. You need to be able to just talk about that neighborhood. You need to explain what's happened in that neighborhood. You need to be the expert where they go, damn, you know your shit. Oops. <laughs> so education, okay? Number three, homework on the subject property. Look, we haven't even gotten. We're not even at the house yet. And already you've worked on the internet. You've worked on your marketing program. You've sent them a YouTube video on your marketing. You've done homework on the subject property. You're going to take the most important properties that are active and put them in your briefcase. You're not going to take them out. You're going to take the most important sales and you're going to put them in your briefcase. You're going to look at the outliers. Okay? Well, this one sold for $350. That's going to come up in the listing presentation. They're going to say, wait, my house is worth more than that. My, this one just sold for $350. You're going to reach in there, you're going to pull it out and go, yeah, I saw that. This house has a thousand square feet more. It was built 20 years later. This is not a comp. You can't use this property to value your property. You have to use these four properties. This is your competition. These are the four sales. You don't bring them out until we get down here to price and commission. And here we have talked, or here I have talked, 27 minutes, and I have not gotten to the house yet. Okay, we're not even walking in the door. So let's walk in the door. 
This is the intro. You're walking around the house. You've got your bag. You take your bag and you put it in, hey, do you mind if I put my bag in the kitchen? You put it on the table, because you're not going out into the living room to make a presentation. You're going to make the presentation at the kitchen table, because you're going to sit down, and they're going to sit down, and you're going to look them in the eye, and you're going to do this with no notes and no paperwork until you need it. It's going to be in your bag, but you're not going to pull it out. You're going to, when you're walking around, you're going to be asking them questions about their motivation, about what their dream is, what do you do for a living, how, you know, you're going to be trying to get to know them. You're going to look for their styles, their uh, propensities, their language, okay? You're not thinking about the house. Don't compliment the house. You're going to have them buy it back. You know, it is a nice house. I think I'll keep it, okay? You, you're sellers. We're salesmen. Our position is that we're here to do a job. The job is to get you the most amount of money in the least amount of time. So when we're walking around the house, we are not trying to think about, oh, that's a nice bathroom. We're thinking about this person. We're asking them questions about their motivation, about their dreams, where they're going, what they do for a living. We're looking for their hot button. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be an, a sale based on emotions. They're going to say, you know that guy, Neil, he really knows his stuff. He really connected with me. I really liked what he had to say and how he said it. So there's something called DISC. Okay, if you go online, you can go to DISC profile. DISC is dominant, I is influence, S is social, and C is communication. They're all different personality styles. Everybody knows dominant, okay? The guy's got a Porsche in the front yard. He's got all these awards on the wall. He prides himself on being a killer. You know, you get a, a dominant, you say, Bill, I gave you my 66-point marketing uh, program last night. You know that I'm a monster at uh, selling. Um, look, I can go through the education. I can do the uh, trial close. I can do price and commission. And then I can ask you for the order to list your house. Or we can skip all that, and I'll pull out the listing document right here, and we can sign you up. Okay, just cut right to the chase with a, disc, with a D, a dominant, and say... I, you know, I could go through all the reasons why you should hire me, my 66-point marketing program. I could talk about the education stuff and all that. Or I could just pull out a listing agreement right now and get you started. Now, if it's a social or a influence, they're more analytical. They're going to be the ones where you like feelings. How would you feel if we sold your house and later you found out it Maybe, you know, we sold it for a lot more than the person should have paid. Or, or how would you feel about anything? The idea is, and then the analytical one, which you, when they start talking, you want to say, oh, hang on, this sounds important. Let me get my book. I want to write this down. So now you're interacting with them the way that they are, are for their own mindset, for their own attitude. So if you go to disk profiles, you can, dot com, you can read about the various kinds of uh, personalities and then you can realize that when you're walking around and you're looking at the house, you're not thinking about the house. You're thinking about the buyer. You're thinking about their traits. You're looking for their motivation. And you can read about this um, extensively about how to develop rapport when you're talking about uh, uh, understanding the seller. Okay. So now we go into education. But before we do, we want to transfer to say something like, I have a program that will make me the most expensive realtor that you will speak to. You interview 20 realtors, and I have a program that will make you, if you go with my platinum program, I will be the most expensive realtor that you talk to. And with your permission, I'm going to show you why you should hire me anyway. Now, the presentation has already been going on. I mean, we, we've set up on Google. We set up our marketing thing. We've done a ton of information on the property. We, we're now in the house, and we're walking around. And he's saying, 
or she's saying granite countertops and all of this, and they think you haven't even started your presentation, but you really have. When you transition over to education, you ask for their permission and you prepare them that you offer one of the most expensive listing packages available. So they're not thinking, how cheap is this going to be? Can I get a 4% listing? They're thinking, oh my gosh, this person is, look, you're going to only get 4 out of 10, okay? You're going to miss out on, on uh, six of these are not going to list with you. So you have a choice. You can go in there and be like every other realtor and try to um, be a commodity, okay? Well, I can do the three-point marketing, uh, MLS, sign, and pray, and I can do that for four and a half or five percent. Or you can distinguish yourself. The, the averages are, if you have three programs, okay, I have a platinum program, I have a gold, and I have a silver. The numbers say that 30% are going to want the platinum program. You just have to give them the opportunity to buy it. Say, if you come in with my 66-point marketing program, it's going to cost you 7% for that listing. Now, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. I'm in price and commission, okay? Um, but when you get to price and commission, we're going to talk about how they're going to, you're going to give them the option of, in my 66 points, I'll do these in my silver program. I'll do all of these plus these in my gold program, and if you want my top dollar, get the most money for your house for 7%, I'm going to do paid advertising, which is going to distinguish your house, give it the opportunity to get in front of the most number of people, and get you the highest price that we can get. Not just the people who are casually shopping, but people who really have a need for your property. So education, talk about the contract, talk about the MLS data sheet, talk about the disclosures and the um, um, putting them on as attachments to the uh, listing. You talk about your uh, marketing plan briefly because you've already sent it to them. And then you say trial close based on everything I've showed you, Neil. I mean, assuming that we can agree on price and commission, are you as convinced as I am that I'm the perfect guy for this job? Yes or no. Yes or no. Yeah. So if they say no, you say a typical I'm, one come up. That's good, but I'm talking to three other realtors. I want to see what they have to say. Absolutely, I'm, I look forward to meeting with you after you've met with them. But if they can't demonstrate the marketing that I've shown you or the education I've given you then I look forward to returning to, uh, to compete for your business. The truth is that it, depending on where you're at in your career, you can just say, look, it doesn't sound like we're a good fit. I appreciate your time. That's a takeaway. Yeah, you got to take away. I, look, I appreciate your time. I won't be coming back, but I do appreciate your time. I wish you the best. And they're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much are you going to charge me? I say, well, I don't charge anything if I don't get the listing. Wait, wait, well, well, if you did get the listing, what would you price it at? I said, look, it doesn't matter, okay? Because it sounds like you've got, they you're, you're shop you exactly. are not convinced that I am the perfect person yeah. for this job. Obviously, I've done a terrible job with my 66-point marketing program. I've done a poor job with giving you education. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Look, I'm going to lose six out of ten of these. I have nothing to lose by saying to them right up front that I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. If you want me... To if, assuming that we do price and commission, do you agree that I'm the, the right person for this job? You don't. Well, I wish you the best of luck and thank you for your time. And you have to get up and leave. It's like buying a car. If you don't get up and leave, they don't have a chance to say, wait, wait, wait. You, wait a minute. Maybe you are the person. You're going to lose six out of ten. Okay? You can lose it by... Please give me the listing. I'm a lonely boy. I don't have any money. I'm going to make my rent. You're never going to get anybody to do business with you if you have that attitude. You have to have the attitude of a salesperson on a mission. I sell houses. Look, I may be a realtor, but I'm a marketing person. What I do is sell things. The fact that I'm a realtor, I have that license. I can sell anything. Okay? You just have to have a plan. You have to be convinced that I'm the right person for the job. Now, if you're convinced that I'm the right person for the job, let's talk price and commission. If not, I wish you the best. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. What? 
you're not going to tell me the commission? I say, am I getting the listing? If we agree on price and commission, am I getting this listing? Nobody's talked to me like that before. So look, it's a two-way street. You want somebody, and I want listings. You want somebody to sell your house. Look, Anna, you're brand new, right? Never had a listing. Here's what I would say. I'm brand new. I've never had a listing. You're going to be my first listing. I'm going to work harder for you than any realtor ever worked. Call Duncan Duo. That's a good They thing. don't answer the phone. I'm not bombarded. Call the senior, senior agents in my office. Look, he's going to click back, call you back. You can't even reach those people. They're so busy. I'm, look, every great realtor who's done a thousand transactions, they all did one as their first one. And a lot of them went in there and they got a, friends and family. By the way, that's a whole other topic to talk about friends and family. How do you deal with friends and family when they know you've never done the transaction? Briefly, you're not doing any transactions anyway. Who's the broker on all your transactions? Caldwell Banker F.I. Gray. You are not the broker. You are an agent for this 99-year-old company that's done millions and tens, billions of dollars probably worth of transactions in the marketplace. When you hire me, you're not hiring me, Anna, the brand new realtor. You're hiring a 99-year-old company, a Caldwell Banker, founded prior to when Newport Ritchie was founded. Newport Ritchie was founded in late uh, 1924. My company was founded in, in uh, early 1924. We're having our 100-year anniversary uh, next year. Very excited about it. But it doesn't matter. You are hiring me in the sense that I will be your agent. I will be the one to implement my 66-point marketing program. I will be the one that will take you from the beginning of this transaction to the end, and nobody's going to work harder for you than I am because you're my only customer. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before, yeah. Can I sign you up? Uh, are, we, are you ready? Assuming we agree on price and commission, are you, can I sign you up? Can you? Are you ready to... To let me, in my youthful enthusiasm, be your guy, <laughs> be your gal. All right, price and commission. So, Neil, your house is worth three hundred grand. I have a three different programs for sellers. I have my silver program, I have my gold program, and I have my platinum program. Now, I know I sent you 66 points in my marketing program, but a lot of those are paid advertising. And the only way I can do paid advertising is if you come in under my platinum plan um, to get the most exposure, to, to get this thing sold as fast as possible with the, with the, with the widest audience, it's going to take paid advertising. I mean, any realtor can, can do the silver plan for 5% and do the three-point marketing program. But for 6%, I'll do everything in the 5%, and I'll do these extra 10 things. For 7%, I'll do target marketing, and I will spend $3,000 to get your home sold. Which one do you want? And what are they going to say? Well, my house is worth three hundred grand, or, or worth three fifty, dollars and you only want to list it for three hundred. dollars This is really, really important. Your response has to be, well, I've looked at the numbers. How did you get to three hundred thousand? By the way, I'm in sales, so I'd rather get you three fifty. And if anybody can get you fifty thousand over the market with my marketing, I'm the one who I get you more money than anyone can get to your house. The problem is, is that when it comes time to do a contract, they're going to have an appraisal contingency, and for us to get this appraisal through, and I will fight to get that thing to appraise $50,000 of a market. But what I really need is empirical data to show, I need comps. What transactions do you have that I can use to prove to the appraiser that your house is worth $350,000? What information do you have? Now he's, she, he, the seller's gonna pull out, he's gonna say, oh, well, what about this one? You know that transaction because you did an unbelievable amount of homework. You know that house. Say, so, yeah, I looked at that. That house sold for 400 grand, but it was built 20 years earlier and it has 1,000 square feet more. That's going to be hard to get the appraisal to use that one as a, uh, as a comparable. What else do you have? What do you have? You pull out the four. 
These are the four transactions, and you know them. You know everything about these houses. This one's a three-bedroom. This one's a four-bedroom. This one is at $200 a square foot. This one's at $210 a square foot. This one has a bigger pool. You have studied. I mean, if you're going to convince them that you know the market, then you better damn sure know the market. And the only way it's going to happen, if you've never done it, you call me up, we'll do a Zoom call, you give me an address, I will teach you in 20 or 30 minutes every single thing that you need to know to sell this house. I'll show you the comps, to copy this one, copy this one, copy this one. Don't pull them out. They're not in a discussion. You have to look at yourselves. If, are, you a, are you an order taker? Are you an advisor? Are you their, I'm going to sell your house? What are you? And you'll please let me have your and I'll put it on MLS, I'll do the three-point marketing plan, and we'll pray that we have sales. Okay? You have to decide. You're going to lose six out of ten of these. You're not going to get the listing. So the only thing you can do to make yourself different from every other realtor is to know your stuff. And that means spending an hour or more on this house and printing all that stuff out and not pulling it out of your bag as some kind of argument. You're only going to bring it out when you're in price and commission. And you're, you're saying, look, I want to get you 350 I just need something to help me prove that it's worth 350 They're not going to be able to come up with it because you know the market better than any of them. All right, so commission. I covered commission. You've got these three choices. Which one do you want to do? I'll do it for 5%, 6%, 7%. 30% of the people are going to take the highest priced one because that's just the way they are. They want the best seats at the concert. They buy Prada and, and, and what are those things called? Those name brand products, uh, Christian Dior. They buy the high end of everything. They get the nicest rental car. They're just, whatever it is, they want the nicest. And that's, so 30% of the time, you have an opportunity to get a full 7% commission. And if you present your marketing program well enough, and if you do your education well enough, and they're gonna say, I, I'm, I'll sign up for the 6% one. Randy, do you, do you think giving a customer a good better best scenario right you you'd want to go over the what they're getting for the well, you have it. the what I would value. recommend you do is have what's called a menu of services I would take your five percent six percent and seven percent and I would put it on a menu of services and I would laminate it and I would say oh here's my menu of services and they're going to see, for 5% they get this, for 6% they get this and this, and for 7% they do that and that. So let's talk about number 8, which is close. So, if they're going with the 7% listing, you know that every Tuesday or Wednesday is the deadline for the Suncoast News. And the St. Pete Times, it, for Sunday, you have till Thursday to put an ad in the Sunco in the uh, Tampa oh. Tribune, Tampa, what do they call it now? The yeah, uh, Tampa Bay Times. Tampa Bay Times. So, okay. we, so we would put newspaper circulation under paid? Paid advertising, yeah, absolutely. The idea is, is that we want to have, under, in our closing, we need to have deadlines. Okay? What's the deadline? So if you're on a Monday, you say, wow, you know, if you sign up today, we'll make it by Thursday to have it on the market, and I'll get it in the St. Pete Times or the Tampa Bay Times. You have to have deadlines ready for your closing. You have to have dates that say, if you do it by this, then. If you sign up now, then. Which way were you thinking? 5% uh, silver, gold, or platinum? Well, I was thinking about the middle one, gold. I say, I'll tell you what, if you sign up today, I'll give you this one item off the platinum for free. If you sign up today, that works out really well because I can get the photographer here by tomorrow. I can get the, uh, I can make the uh, paid advertising by the 
Thursday, I can do it. You have to have, what, before you go on the presentation, you have to know what the deadlines are so that you can bring them with you and say, oh, today's a Tuesday. We only have two days to make the deadline. I need this paperwork signed right now. I've got to get the data entry in tomorrow. And I, I mean, that will mean it, but by Thursday, I can put the ad in the paper for this, or I can put the ad in a particular location for this. You have to have pre-prepared uh, deadlines that you're going to use in your closing, and then you also have the opportunity to use your gold, silver, and platinum programs by saying, if you sign up today, I will do everything on the gold and silver, and I'll do one thing off the platinum. Now going off of this for a moment, away from the uh, presentation, if you are agreeing to spend $3,000 on a listing, you're not going to be able to do an easy exit listing. An easy exit listing is one in which they can walk away at any time for any reason. Mm -hmm. So you're going to say, look, you're going to reimburse me for any of my expenses if you want to walk away during the um, period. Um, some of the things that we can give them um, our communications guarantee. You can say, I guarantee you that I will call you every Tuesday and give you an update. If I don't, you can fire me. Okay, you can do an easy exit listing and say, if I don't, if you, if you uh, decide you don't want to sell your house and I haven't spent any money on it, then I'll just give you a release. It won't cost you anything to leave. If you do the 5% listing, I'm not spending any money on um, marketing. So if I haven't spent any money, I can give you an easy exit listing agreement. Um, you can do the smart seller program. Smart seller says, listen, if you end up finding a buyer on your own, I'll withdraw, no commission. Of course, if you're on the higher price programs, you'll have to reimburse the selling expenses that I've paid. But I can give you a smart seller program so that if, if your cousin or your brother or one of your buddies wants to buy your house, I'll just step away and you guys can go ahead and do that transaction. And if you go through and Google listing presentations, all of these guys, girls, there's one girl, what's her name, Mom? She's great. Um, she has her own content. Um, there's two of them, Mom. Jess, uh, Jess, Jess Novell, I love her stuff. Um, and then this other Muriel, she's very, very enthusiastic. Don't write it down, just email me and I'll send you their names. But they all pick charge for content. Um, but if you go to their, um, uh, you know, you go to YouTube and pull up, you know, Tony Robbins and see all kinds of his content, it doesn't cost you anything. So uh, in your, let's call it your arsenal, all of your, your uh, points that you're going to make, um, you can come up with them, and, and I, I don't have it with me, but I can give you a couple of more, uh, like a communication guarantee, an easy exit, a smart seller program, where you can use this to sell. Why should you do business with me? Questions? A lot of times you'll run into, you're going through your presentation and you only get so far and the other agent says they're charging one and a half percent. Understood. Are they going to do this? Are they offering you a 66 point marketing plan? Or are they doing a three point marketing plan? You're going to get what you pay for. Um, if, look, if you want to get the cheapest deal you can get, I know a lady that will list your house for $295. Okay, you don't need to do a 5% or 4% listing. If, if it's really all you care about is the commission, then, but I would assume that, that you're, you care about the commission, but you only care to the extent of how am I going to get more money. You're discounting the value of a superstar marketing person to get you more. If I get you $10,000 more for your home versus a 4% or a 5% commission, you're going to net more for your home. You're going to net more in your pocket. That's really what it boils down to. You want to net the most amount of money in your pocket. So a 4% listing and getting $10,000 or less is going to cost you a lot more than paying me. And by the way, you're going to pay me only if it sells. Okay, I'm going to put out all this effort. I'm going to do all this marketing. I'm going to put this thing all together, and I'm going to guide you through a transaction. But if it doesn't sell, I don't make anything. 
So the truth is a 4%, 5%, 6% listing, 7%, none of that matters if your house doesn't sell. But you gotta remember, you have to have an attitude. You're gonna lose out six out of 10 times. So you, if you don't go in there and be somewhat cocky and confident and, and I don't wanna say full of yourself, look, I'm here to do a job. I was, you, you're, you're interviewing realtors, right? I appreciate the opportunity, I really do. I'm glad I was able to make time to meet with you today. I look forward to doing this job. In the meantime, do you have any questions? Now, if the house has been listed before, you always want to be the second realtor. The second realtor is the one that sells the house. The first realtor, the person wanted to list it at 350. And if you're up against somebody like that, say, look, um, have you heard of price tuition? Price tuition is where you say, I say, what's it worth? 310, 320, 330, 340. Oh, I'm going to hire Neil. He said it's worth 340. Yeah, yeah. That's price tuition. It's saying the house is worth more than it is to get the listing. And then uh, uh, spending the next three months bringing the price down. Oh, you got to lower the price. It's too high. I mean, this is not a fiduciary. This is somebody who got the listing by convincing you of a lie. Your house is not worth 340. And if you need to put it out there at 340 for 60 or 90 days to prove to yourself that it's not worth it, then let that other realtor handle it. Well, give them a 60-day listing or a 30-day listing at 340. And then at the end of 30 days, you call me back and I'll sell your house for what it's worth. Let them take the listing. Give and or even better, if they got someone who wants to do a four percent listing, say, look, Case Stevens Realty will do it for $295. Don't let the four percent listing person have it. Give it to the look, you're gonna lose six out of ten. So don't take it personally when you don't get the listing. You're not going to get the listing six out of ten times. Now, if you've done a really, really good job in your internet presence, if you've done a really, really good job on your marketing program, if you've done a really, really good job on the homework, and by the way, this is all without even going into, you haven't even met them yet, you're going to have four or five, six hours of preparation to go do this listing appointment, and you're going to be sharp as a tack. You know why? Because you attended my webinar or seminar on how to do a listing presentation. You have got to have an attitude. I mean, you're, I'm, listen, I know your time is very valuable, and so is mine. I appreciate the opportunity to give you this presentation. I'm going to go kind of fast. That's why I sent you the YouTube video last night on my marketing. Because if I spent... It, it's true, but people have noticed that they're, they're talking to you because they want to sell their home. Sometimes you don't have to go through any of that. Just, boom, you're ready to go. Well, depending on their their disc yeah, profile, yeah, yeah, you yeah. might be able to go straight into it. Yeah. And that's what people do. They come in and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. Yeah. And they're they too afraid. Much, yeah. They don't bring up price and commission. See this trial close? Okay, you've given them introduction, you've given them education, and now you say, based on everything I've said so far in my 66-point marketing program, do you agree I'm the best person to do this job, Joe, assuming we agree on price and commission? You are. I am. You're damn right. You're lucky to have me. If you don't have an attitude about it, why are they going to... If you don't believe in yourself, why would they believe in you? Okay, when you go in there and say, look, I'm, I'm here to do a job. I, look, I may be a realtor. That's just because I have to license. I'm a marketing person. What I do is I sell... For me, it's true. I was stockbroker for 18 years, and then I ran a, a real estate investment company where I sold houses without a license. Now I'm selling houses with a license. My presentation and my ability to walk in there and say, I've done 391 listings. I mean, I can say things you can't say, but you can tailor your presentation based on what you can say. Uh, for example, these are just ex ex extra ideas. There's something called an agent selection guide. Okay? Agent se selection guide. And guess who writes that? You write it. So you would put an agent like Joe. You would say, veteran, check. Good looking man, check. I don't know what you put. You're going to have to find 10 things that describe you. And then you create an agent selection guide. And then you put these 10 things. And then you put a check next to it. You know, why hire, why hire Joe Panetta versus any other realtor? agent selection guide that you write and you put down all the reasons why they should hire you 
Billy, you got all those years in sales, you got all those years running a, a, a real estate investment company, you know more about comps than anybody else, you are an expert at title searches. You can create 10 things where you stand out and then you create an agent selection guide and you give them to them, here's my brochure. And it says all these reasons why you should hire Joe Panetta. And you wrote it. Seven percent uh, that you applied in them realistically. I don't see it in MLS at all. Is it? Does By the it way, happen? you know, when you do seven percent, that's the gross. That's not um, what you're paying. You're going to pay the other seller three, three and a half, okay. two, two and a half. Yeah. It's nothing to keep you from listing it at seven and a half, at seven percent, and keeping four and a half percent and giving two and a half percent to the buyer. The seven percent is the gross. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, half for the buyer and half for the seller. But we're superstar listing agents and we sell properties. I'm doing it for 4% on my side. I'm giving 3% to the buyer's agent. Or I'm going to take 4.5% and I'm going to give them 2.5% because I'm selling this property myself. 30% of the time, if you give them the opportunity to do a 7% commission, 30% of the time, they're going to pay. Don't say 7%. You say platinum. Say, here's my platinum. You got it. I don't know what your marketing program is, okay? I, I don't know what you're going to put on your list. You're going to create it. And then you're going to do a YouTube video. Every single time you do a home, uh, a, a presentation, I have a presentation tomorrow. I'm going to say, hi, Neil. This is Randy. I'm meeting with you tomorrow. I just wanted to cover the marketing so that I won't spend take up too much of your time when we get together tomorrow. And then you're going to go, bing, 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 all this stuff, okay? And they're going to go, my God, look at this guy. He's going to do 67 points. Or you're going to find 23 is all you got. But I wouldn't say I have a 23-point marketing. I would say I have a marketing plan. Okay, this is my marketing plan. And you're going to say, uh, all this stuff. Very excited about it. Oh, I've got some great results off of LinkedIn. Oh, people aren't doing TikTok. Neither am I. Don't say that. All right, we're running out of time. This is supposed to be one hour. We just hit one hour. Any questions? No, that was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. That was good stuff. Thank you, oh, thank you so much. Good. Yeah. yeah, a lot of content, yeah. free, valuable I mean, content. You know, most people probably know, have a, a framework already, but going back and filling in the blanks and getting the process and the procedure, it's always good to... Good. Yeah. Going back to, going yeah. back to yeah. basics. You know, put it all together.